Hello and welcome to CNBC TV18 and Kantar Brand Z C-Suite panel. I'm Shubhani Gharat. The panel is themed Building Valuable Brands in VUCA 2.0 World. As we contemplate what post-pandemic world might look like, in certain areas it is clear that volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity is going to be vast. So how do businesses create winning strategies and valuable brands during these complex times? To tell us more today on the panel, we have Sujit Ganguly, Head Brands and Communication, ICICI Bank, Sukleen Aneja, CEO, FMCG and Beauty Brands, The Good Glam Group. We have Kumar Gaurav Singh, Vice President, Marketing, Whirlpool India, Dipinder Rana, Executive MD, South Asia, Insights Division, Kantar, Tim Kelsal, Chief Operating Officer, Global Client Practice and Chief Client Officer, APAC, Kantar. And then we have Siddharth Shakdar, EVP, Disney Plus, Hotstar. All of you, welcome to this panel. Thank you. Thank you. Rana, let's begin this conversation with you. Uh, you know, VUCA is a term that we have been hearing for such a long time and now we are speaking about VUCA 2.0. So what has really changed from the first time we heard the term VUCA to this VUCA 2.0 and how is the complexity of this uh, particular, uh, you know, the, the times that we live in different from then and what right. could be the learnings from there? Right. I mean, so that VUCA was primarily driven by digital transformation, which I think has continued and accelerated. But in some ways, businesses are getting and consumers are getting to terms with it, mm -hmm. right? So there's kind of less uncertainty there. But then you have added elements of uncertainty, which is, you know, nobody saw the pandemic coming. Mm -hmm. I think Bill Gates did, but nobody else did. Uh, nobody saw the war coming. Yeah, nobody saw the war coming. And then inflation, which I think Indians are used to inflation. Mm -hmm. There have been periodic bouts of inflation in India in the past. Uh, but many, for much of the Western world, it's a completely new uh, phenomenon. So lots of headwinds, and I think as uh, marketers, as uh, brand builders, uh, just more variables to deal with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, over to you, Sukleen. What are the biggest challenges and opportunities, uh, you know, in this uh, VUCA 2.0? I think I'll break the answer into two parts. First, I'd speak of the biggest opportunity that lies ahead. The opportunity is in forging partnerships collaborations and creating an ecosystem that can allow you to make ensure that your business survives. And I think perhaps our greatest challenge is the fact that there's so many new, so many new issues that you're confronted with, which are absolutely new, not for yourself, but for the world. So how do you stay agile and nimble footed mm -hmm. in solving for it? And also be comfortable in the fact that you may not have all the answers. Mm -hmm. The biggest opportunity that perhaps lies is in the kind of ecosystems and partnerships that today businesses need to create and collaborate with because one of the things which I think all businesses are relied on is that there is number one an extreme merit in having internal sourcing and dependence of suppliers of continuity within your country so that at no point of time should the disruption affect business continuity mm -hmm. that I think has been one big learning for businesses mm -hmm. second I would say is also with respect to the way we reach out to our consumers Newer models had to be explored. A lot of the conventional world in the way we operated businesses has also gone through change. And I think agility has really been tested in times like these. So personal agility is business agility and has created an environment where everyone has to be open to collaborations because fundamentally it's the ecosystems and the partnerships that you're forging internally and externally that's actually going to help businesses survive. You know, and that is where the question of survival comes in. Yeah. And over the past two years also, Sukleen, uh, you are someone who has changed organizations from a classic FMCG company to uh, like a fairly new player, you know, in the Indian market. So how do they approach, you know, like times like this and what is the difference, you know, that you saw as uh, a leader? You know, I think generally if you look at the environment in which you operate in large companies, you're very insulated to a large level, hmm. right? Because the organizations are extremely strong. There, are, there is a lot of stability that exists in companies which have been built with over a hundred year heritage, right? Younger companies are a lot more nimble. And I think the biggest change that you see in environments like these is how important is survival, how important is agility. And you're not as insulated because you are actually absolutely out there, hmm. right? And you're, you know, you experience business like you would if you really started afresh. Hmm. It's truly the founder's mentality that gets tested 
Sujit, what about you? How has uh, you know marketing a bank shifted or changed from uh, the pre-pandemic world to now? So because you know, over the past two years, also the interest in everything, money matters, has also increased. increased like everyone sharply. is really tuned in. Every yes. everyone is really interested where to put in the money, where to stay invested, and all of these things have really shifted in the have past two years. A lot. Right. So two things that we have seen or we have done post the pandemic. A is that uh, the convenience of digital. Mm -hmm. We were anyway a digital first bank, but. Uh, we have upped the ante uh, significantly post the pandemic and we have seen the rewards because customers are saying that I should be able to do or get my service wherever I am irrespective of the location. And what we have seen is that when we have launched new services and new products on the digital, hmm. the uptake has been very high hmm. across geographies, across town classes, across types of customers. Uh, so that is something, I mean, anyway, we were, we were on the digital curve as a country, we were going up, but I think it's got severely accelerated post the pandemic. That's mm -hmm. one. Second thing that we have done for us, which has worked very well, is that um, what uh, we have said is if you meet a customer, and, a cust mm -hmm. and a, as a bank, we can service a lot of needs for the customer. Mm -hmm. What we have said is this, this concept of 360 degree banking. Uh, if you meet any person from the bank, that person, he or she will provide you all the services. Mm -hmm. It's a one point contact. That is working beautifully for us as a bank because mm -hmm. you don't need to go and meet different people across the bank. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's striking a chord because people are saying that time is precious. Don't make me go and meet different people. One person should take care of all my needs. It could be very diverse from an account to a loan to a card to mm -hmm. a business need or whatever. Mm -hmm. So those are things that have really worked mm -hmm. for us in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kumar, over to you, uh, how, you know, let's say, how have the priorities for an organization or a brand shifted, you know, during these complex, turbulent times? And I think that's a large part of the mental model hmm. that is that goes into thinking about how we redesign products hmm. and how we redesign our brand experience in a language that is relevant for today hmm. because there are so many more players out there who can reinvent themselves the drop of a hat. Hmm. And how about dealing with the entire supply chain issues also? Uh, you know, for a company like Whirlpool, let's say there's, there used to be like, you know, those key seasons like the summers, like, you know, the festive season where consumers would go ahead and buy your product. So has that shifted, changed and how are you dealing with that? I think supply chain, uh, for sure there were some, uh, you know, uh, hiccups that did happen during the lockdown stages. Mm. I would say la now mostly they're behind us. Mm. I think the semiconductor shortages that we talk seem to hear a lot about is possibly a lot more with the auto industry than the durables. Mm. Uh, having said which, uh, yes, uh, two summers were washed away in the last two years. We're all expecting to see a good festive sales coming up around the corner. So all fingers crossed to see that. Okay, great. Siddharth, over to you. What are the biggest challenges faced by OTT brands today and how do you overcome those? You know, so some of the biggest challenges we face is uh, the world today is far more cluttered than it used to be, right? And so earlier consumers could connect with a brand if the brand was fulfilling them from a transactional benefits point of view. But now, um, in addition to all the clutter, there's also consumers are changing and their identity is becoming even more important for them. Mm. So what am I, what do I stand for? These questions are far more important in the consumer's mind than they were yesterday. Mm. And if you've got to break out through the clutter, entertainment is a person's window to the world. It's, mm. their, it's, their, it's their idea of exploring their identity mm. also comes through entertainment. Yeah, and how do you do that? Because, you know, entertainment could be vast. Like if, uh, like I have a hot star, uh, you know, on my TV and on my phone. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I mean, I watch football on it. I watch cricket on it. I watch series on it. I watch movies on it. So how, how do you, uh, like, you know, have that identity connect with the consumer? Uh, that's a really good question. Actually, a very tough one to answer. But I think two or three things that one could do to hmm. understand this right so there are those there are regular marketing tools through which you can understand this psychographics etc through which you can understand consumers uh, but more than that i don't think a brand sometimes make the mistake of thinking it's a snapshot hmm. and so you understand once and then these are the personas that i'm going to chase and these are the personas that i'm going to communicate with hmm. uh, but i think what we miss out is the fact that identities evolve Hmm. So you've got to kind of consistently keep in touch and keep understanding how your consumers think. 
Hello and welcome back with global factors weighing in on recovery how can businesses build valuable brands in VUCA 2.0 world well that's what we are discussing here on this panel with a couple of CXOs Tim uh, you know there is this age old term brand valuation and brand value creation so how uh, you know how has brand valuation versus brand value creation shifted during these uh, times mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we've seen is the importance of uh, brand value as measured by equity. So, you know, what the brand stands for in the minds of consumers has become more and more important because there's more choice within categories and also consumers, as we've talked about, are under stress from different uh, elements that are happening within the macro environment. They want shortcuts in order to make sure that they're making the right choice. Yeah? And also in the environment of you know, inflation and you know, pandemic, they want to make sure that they're making the right choices on behalf of their families and also that they're getting you know, quality. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, if you like, peace of mind mm -hmm. uh, within a world that's changing around them and also what they're faced with you know, ongoing uh, you know, challenges. So brand has never been you know, more important and we see that in the Brand Z uh, ranking that the importance of brand continues to play out and those that have won uh, through the pandemic and also coming out of it are the, are the ones that really put the consumer foot first and the brand right at the centre of their organisation. Uh, uh, Rana, we are meeting on the sidelines of Brand Z 75 most valuable Indian brands uh, report uh, release. And I am tempted to ask you, how has the term brand value or the phrase brand value evolved over the past uh, a few years and where does it stand now? How has the definition changed? I think what has changed is uh, in India specifically, we've seen the importance of brand purpose. Hmm. So the Indian consumer is saying, you know, beyond making profit, what is the bigger societal benefit hmm. uh, or even a bigger personal benefit do you stand for? Hmm. Uh, so that brand purpose has become very important. Again, hmm. in an uncertain world, people want to be inspired by brands with a purpose. Hmm. And then uh, finally, sustainability. Hmm. So despite being in, uh, you know, um, hmm. Uh, not not a rich world market, hmm. Indians are very concerned about, for example, climate change and hmm. its impact on them. So hmm. they want brands to be stepping up and building a more sustainable world hmm. Uh, hmm. for the future. And, and, you know, brands which take a lead in that, again, hmm. we see they're, uh, they're more predisposed to getting uh, purchased and hence building a stronger yeah. brand value. Yeah. 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 Uh, one of the crucial things, uh, you know, uh, is when things get tough, uh, you know, finances are tight. So how do you go about that? How do you, like, do you stay invested or do you, like, you know, like, hold back your advertising and marketing? I think... To create brand value. How you, do you... Go? You are heard the loudest when the room is quiet. Hmm. I think that's when you build the strongest brands. Is that what you did? Uh, I think what we've ended up doing is we ended up going back and reinforcing what the products are doing in terms of reinventing whether it is wash performance, hmm. whether it is driving uh, nutrition in the homes. Hmm. I think it's important to re-look at yourself in the mirror and, and see the world around you and look at what it takes to reinvent. So I think we've gone back to investing into our, into our manufacturing lines and our products and make sure that the core product actually holds a customer experience that really rises above everybody else out there. And I think that's really where the story starts. Hmm. You build these products that you know you can actually make a difference, and especially in the durables industry, which is such a high-touch product. Hmm. Uh, so I think that's what we've done. We've hmm. gone ahead and we've reinvested in a large part of our portfolio, hmm. reinforced and reinvented what um, you know washing machines can do for you, what refrigerators can do for you. Hmm. And I think that's what you do. You go back to the core hmm. and, you re and you rebuild from scratch. Okay, what about you, uh, Suklin? Your thoughts on this? I think if you actually see empirical evidence, hmm. brands that have stayed invested in downturns are the ones that actually came out stronger when hmm. the bell curve sh when the curve shifted. Hmm. So clearly, there's enough and more empirical evidence that supports brands to stay invested. I think what does change from a strategic lens is that you go back to building your core, hmm. the very reason why you're bought for the first time or why consumers reward you with loyalty. Hmm. So I think in that context, even if we see our business, we've absolutely stayed invested on the core brands, hmm. on the core promise. Hmm. Despite the shift that happened, we continue to invest behind building the core propositions why people would hmm. buy you in the first place. Hmm. So I think I'm a huge believer of being consistently invested 
despite the fact there's a downturn because it will reward you mm. when the curve will shift. Okay, uh, moving on, final thoughts on building valuable brands, uh, you know, in uh, the times that lie ahead, ahead of the pandemic. Let's begin with you, Sujit, again. I'll just link it to a question you asked some time back, opportunities and challenges, and I think that will be relevant to this question. So uh, the, the situation is such that uh, opportunities and challenges are part of the continuum. Hmm. Uh, the reason I'm saying it is because in a category like banking, thanks to technology, there are new offerings coming in every quarter, right? Hmm. There are fintech brands coming in, there are, uh, some, there are offerings coming in from abroad, so there are offerings dime a dozen. Hmm. Uh, what is the way to do it is that, uh, I'll just give you an example. Something called an account aggregator has got launched, which you must have heard of, where hmm. Um, people can apply for loans to, a, uh, to an organization where you don't have your account, hmm. but the organization, the bank wants to know your, what is your salary, what, how much money you have in your bank. You don't need to put in your bank statement. Through an account aggregator, the organization giving the loan can access it from the bank where you have your savings account, hmm. right? Um, so this is just an example of technology coming in. Now this means that organizations can now start giving loans even if they do not know the account profile of the person who's seeking the loan. Hmm. Now, organizations that can cater to this technology seamlessly will be winners. Hmm. This is a very small example that I'm giving, hmm. that if the, the situation will keep changing every quarter, hmm. every year, organizations that are fleet-footed and are able to understand which way consumers are moving hmm. will be the ones that will disproportionately gain in hmm. the years hmm. to come. And, uh, you know, finally, uh, what would VUCA 2.0 really mean for an OTT player like Disney Plus Hotstar? For example, if you look at VUCA in this pandemic specifically, when mobility got taken out of the picture, we started looking at... Uh, you know, what do consumers care about today, hmm. right? So it became about the fact that I cannot go out and have this experience, but I want to understand about all the experiences that are there. In a way, it's a, it's a bit of a, a third-person view of traveling hmm. or looking at some fantastical show or, or something like that, where it's almost a voyeuristic look at it, where hmm. I'm not a part of it, but I can, I, I can imagine myself being there. Hmm. So we started focusing on, uh, you know, entertainment like that, hmm. which would talk to that particular uh, audience and that cohort. Hmm. So those are some of the ways in which we kind of as a brand evolved hmm. and gave focus to, you know, uh, uh, in terms of fantasy, for example, became big at that time, hmm. you know, and uh, superheroes like Marvel, etc we started pushing it out in different languages because mm. suddenly there was a lot of, uh, you know, uptake for, for looking at fantastical journeys mm. because currently I'm cooped up here, so fantastical journey is my way of a release and that's how we evolved and we started mm. dubbing everything and we started putting it out in multiple languages and there's been massive spike, you know, uh, for OTT on that. Not only that, we started, one mistake you make is you, you do all of that but you market in English, right? Mm. So we changed all our marketing even for Marvel titles, which were very English forward a couple of years ago. We now market in the local languages, mm. each of those Marvel titles, mm. right? So, so in that sense, we also evolved as a brand and understood that maybe this is what the consumer needs mm. at this point. That was their identity at that point. Mm. And again, it may evolve to somewhat different once the yeah. pandemic is over, right? So to understand that behavior and respond to it, I think mm. this is one of the examples about what we did Great. in the pandemic. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. And thank you for watching CNBC TV 18 and Kantar C-Suite panel building valuable brands in VUCA 2.0 world. Goodbye.